everyone. I'm Christine Tully, President and Executive Writing Coach at Defend, Publish, and Lead. Welcome to Episode 142, Writing and Organizational Strategies for Doctoral Students. I got the idea for this episode after working with a number of clients this week that have varying levels of struggle with working as a doctoral student. And I think a lot of times we hear about graduate students that are struggling with the dissertation process, they're struggling with their advisor, maybe they don't like their topic anymore and they're bored, their research methodology was the, the inappropriate one for that particular project. There are so many things that can go wrong with the doctoral process and working on the dissertation per se. But I would argue that some of these challenges actually come into play a little bit earlier as a doctoral student when we think about how to navigate coursework, how we navigate things like note taking on readings for class, how we manage our citations and what we do with them. And so I wanted to walk through a couple of those, those strategies that I think are necessary. I certainly am not going to talk about how to tackle all of them in this episode. There's no way to do that, although I do have a way to address some of those challenges, which I'll talk about in just a second. Um, but really, the issue with a lot of doctoral work is, is multi-pronged before we ever get to a dissertation. So one of those challenges is certainly reading. We're reading a lot. We're reading new things. Some of it's for class. Some of it's for our own research outside of class. And one, one technique that a lot, or not, I shouldn't even call it a technique, let's call it a skill. One skill that a lot of people don't have by the time they get to a doctoral program is a way to manage this information efficiently. And I think a lot of times we're tricked into saying, oh, well, if you just use a citation manager, it'll be so much easier. You can you know, have keywords and use something like Zotero and you know, have your notes and coding strategies and all that kind of stuff. And that definitely can help manage something like that. But even before then, we really want to think through some of the processes that help with understanding where things go after you use them. And, I, and this is where I think it, it gets down to sort of nuts and bolts. So working with clients this week, one of my first questions when working with one client that was really struggling with keeping up with the reading in the program and then translating that writing or that reading into their writing, my first class, my first question was, how are you reading an article? Describe it to me. And so what I found was, they are still, even as a doctoral student, reading top to bottom, not necessarily skim reading, not necessarily decide, doing a quick read to decide if they even want this article by, say, looking at the methodology or reading the abstract and so on. So they, you know, they feel like they need to absorb all the information because we're taught this is how to be a good scholar. And there's lots of great strategies. I'll put a couple in the show notes about how to do reading as a doctoral student to be able to just decide whether you need it or not and do part of that academic decision making process. So, you know, that's one of the areas where certainly there's some challenges. The next level challenge is if you want to use the reading, if you definitely either have to read it for class and even have to might be somewhat subjective. Because, you know, we might find that maybe in a class the reading is suggested and you don't, you're not really interested in it for your research. It's not going to be talked about in class. Maybe you don't want to use it. Um, but there, there are multiple, multiple ways to decide what happens to that reading after you decide whether you're using it or not. Assuming you are, the next strategy might be to think about where am I going to use this reading? And I know over the episodes on the podcast, I've talked about this a little bit tangentially, but this is something I do and I've noticed that a lot of experienced faculty writers do to decide what they're doing about the reading. They, they have a reason why they want to read something and then they use it accordingly. So they decide, okay, I'm reading this, this article to understand a certain methodology. I'm reading this article to understand a certain model of how I might conduct my research study. This article is actually the content or my, my source, you know, my object source. I know I've talked about this in four reasons for source support. I'll link to that in the show notes. Um, but this is actually my object of study. That's why I'm reading this particular, you know, thing, whatever it is. And so making that decision and deciding how you're going to read is another skill that not everybody learns, even as a PhD student. And so this is why, this is one of the reasons why I often recommend a book called How Scholars Write, because this is the first place that I've seen where this is really articulated, how to use that, that reading. So certainly that's another strat or another area that doctoral students it's a, it's a piece of the whole puzzle that sometimes is missing and that carries over into a dissertation because by the time you get to the dissertation where you're reading lots of stuff, 
if you haven't really figured out how to efficiently decide about sources, how do you, um, once you've got them, how to use them in your writing, it, it only spirals from there because the reading can back up, the research can back up, and it just can take a whole lot longer than it needs to. So another challenge that I know that some scholars have when they're trying to make some decisions is just thinking about just overall time management. Certainly the reading and the writing is a problem. Translating the writing into the, or the reading into the writing can be time consuming, but certainly many doctoral students now are at the age where they have other types of responsibilities. Some of us have families, some of us have elder care responsibilities. Um, some of us might be working another job. Um, and this is becoming more and more common with a lot of the clients that I'm seeing. Many of them are teaching an extra class on the side somewhere else just because doctoral stipends aren't, you know, maybe as high as they once were. So all of these things really add up to a whole host of challenges that doctoral students may face. And so I know I said in this episode, I'm not going to talk about how to solve those challenges. There's no way I can do that, although I will throw some resources in the show notes. I wanted to share something that's coming up that's a new initiative that we're doing. Um, at Defend and Publish that I think um, might be helpful for most of you. So as many of you know, we do run events on Eventbrite um, and you can find us at Defend and Publish or Defend, Publish and Lead. It, it actually goes to both because we now Defend, Publish and Lead on Eventbrite. And if you Google that, you can come in and you can see all the types of offerings we do. We tend to run a free webinar every month. There is one for every, the month coming up. Um, the next one coming up is our one on citation manuals and some updates with APA um, and MLA and so on. So you can check that out, but we do run a free webinar most months, except for the summer months. So you're welcome to check those out. Um, we usually offer a writing class that's just a, a one-time, only one-hour commitment on a specific skill. So one coming up for us is writing as a new scholar or a new, uh, new faculty member. And this is actually great for doctoral students as well, because that's, that's a jump that many of them have a difficulty making, which is sometimes why they end up as some of our, our clients for coaching. Um, but what I wanted to point out for today to kind of help out with working with um, organizational strategies as a doctoral student is actually a four week series that we are doing in October, which we're, we're doing something totally different. I've never done this before, um, but I am partnering on this one with Lisa Woodruff. She is the CEO, founder, president of Organize 365. It is a home organization company. And on a totally different tangent, I was listening to her because I'm kind of interested in organization, period. I think about it more in terms of writing, but any kind of organizational podcast I sometimes will listen to. And I just really liked her style and I got hooked because I think she has a common sense approach. And she started doing these episodes about how she was doing a doctoral degree in psychology because she wants to understand organization and home management. And when I heard some of the things that she was describing just on her own journey as an organizational scholar before she ever got to a PhD, I knew that these were strategies that I really wanted to bring to our Defend, Publish, and Lead community because I think she talks about organization and doing things as a PhD student in a way that makes sense. So if you are somebody that is a PhD student thinking, I don't belong here, I don't understand what's going on, everybody's talking a totally different language, even if you're a new faculty and you feel that, that way, I would check out her series. She's running a four week series for us, just one hour a week on various strategies that doctoral students need, but honestly, new faculty, faculty that have been in the game for a really long time need. And so what you'll look at are four different, four different aspects of this. So one would be just about the importance of planning for kind of a big picture, how you're going to figure out coursework, your assignments to make sure these translate into future publications. You, you, if you use a reading in one class, how do you make sure two semesters later, you know where that reading is so you can get it again. Um, she definitely has a really great, um, one of our episodes talked about using reading strategies and how she color codes. I just was fascinated by this. And I, I had asked her specifically to do initially just a quick webinar and showing us that. And then the more I thought about it, I really want to see the whole package. So in session two, she'll be talking about that and how she color codes reading so she can use it later. And so those colors stick in her mind so she knows 
what something is when she's reading it and what part of the article she's going to reuse again. So again, it's all part of the academic decision making. Um, she's also going to talk to us a little bit about Zotero. Um, we've done some webinars on Zotero before, but I kind of like it as part of the larger package of all the things man management related to organizing a PhD. And then definitely just some general time management skills, especially since she's so good about organizing. She's been studying home organization for decades. So for people that are interested in just balancing home and doctoral work or academic work and home life, this would be a really great, um, a great way to kind of look at those things all together. So I'm hoping that you can join us right now. If you go to Eventbrite, I did throw up a $5 off coupon. So you can actually get this for our four, all four of these hourly sessions. They are $45 for all of them, not for each. So it's it's pretty great. You get to go to these writing classes. You get to talk to Lisa directly. Um, you also, as part of this, will get any kind of materials, templates, and things that she has and all of the recordings. So if you're not able to attend these sessions live, you'll be able to get the recordings. And more details are on the link at Eventbrite. I'll throw it in the show notes. So I also wanted to say um, one other thing about how I'm thinking through this, this PhD in organizational strategy. I've mentioned before, we're sponsored by the Textbook and Academic Authors Association. And especially in the fall, they, they run some really great offerings, I think, to help with getting through PhD coursework and, and beyond. So many of these things that we've been talking about, um, some of the things are, are related to motivation and they run a t uh, writing gym for October called the month of motivation. I think this would be a really great thing to try. I'm actually going to try it this month. So I'm going to participate in it, see what it's like. I'm sure I'll do a podcast episode on it, but I wanted to mention it now because many of you have joined textbook and academic authors association, um, either because you heard about it on the podcast or you were already looking for that kind of content. I've mentioned it's a really great organization. It's very cheap to join. Um, and you get all kinds of, you know, webinar content and all that stuff, but you also get lots of templates and free resources. So having this writing gym, this is another thing to take a look at. Um, I'm going to register for it. I'm going to try it, see what, what comes out of that. Some of the offerings at TAA, I do believe have an extra cost. I'll have to see if this, the writing gym does, but I know for me, that's something that I'm going to try. Um, not necessarily because I'm so, um, worried about a motivation angle. I like, you know, obviously I love the stuff. This is why I do the podcast. Um, but I know for me, I need some fine tuning for sure. All faculty writers can always benefit from other strategies and ways of thinking. So I really want to see what they do in this gym to see if it helps my writing process. And that's what I'll be reporting on in a future episode. So hopefully this helps thinking through some of the things as a doctoral student you might need. Um, one shout out to faculty developers out there. If you have doctoral students that you are really struggling to help, you are more than welcome to register for this four week series and see if any of these strategies stick and it's something that you can use. Or as many of our university faculty are doing, they're actually attending with their PhD students. So that way they can talk through some of the strategies featured each week. So if you're interested in something like that or a university package, you can always reach out to me at christine at defendandpublish.com. And happy writing this week.